If you have your Bible, if you want to get that out, Dixie's going to come up and read our passage today from Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 15. And when a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word of a truth, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in the time of testing, fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. This is the word of the Lord. So good, so good. It is good to see you today. I appreciate you being here today. And uh, we're starting a brand new series. Uh, It is called Kingdom Secrets. And uh, you heard, uh, Dixie, thank you so much for reading. You heard her reading today. And there was a word that was used quite a bit. It was the word hear or hearing. I don't know if you saw that in your passage, in your Bible there. Hopefully you got your Bibles open, Luke chapter 8. Uh, maybe you've got it turned on or something. You can highlight all those different places of hearing. Uh, it, it is a unique thing to hear, to hear, to hear, but to not understand. I had the opportunity of living in another country before, and I would hear a language but not understand it. Uh, maybe you are a football person. You are uh, or you're loving the fact that the XFL is on, you're loving the fact that the USFL, whatever that is today, is on, started yesterday, the draft is this week, uh, you know, that football seems to be coming, maybe it's another week, I'm not certain, Sam, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, it, there's, football is everywhere right now. One of the things that is so unique, I don't know if you've watched any of the XFL, but in that you can uh, hear them talking, the coaches back and forth talking to the players, and you're hearing the play go on. Like, and th- there's all these weird things. There's like puck 37, and round nine, V8, running this way, get your double pack. I don't know what all. BKK, have it your way. I don't know. <laughs> There's all of these things that even though I'm listening to it on television or maybe even the other team is hearing it, nobody knows what's being said. They don't have an understanding. They're hearing, but they're not understanding unless they're on the offense, right? Because they're the ones who understand what's going on. Well, this is what we're going to see. This new series that we're in is called Kingdom Secrets. And the passage, in fact, look at this passage with me. Look at verse 9 and 10 in Luke chapter 8. Why is it called that? Well, here's what he says. He says, and when his disciples asked him about what this parable meant, the one that Dixie just read, when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But others, they are in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. We're going to be walking over the next several weeks. In fact, we're going to be walking over the next five weeks talking about parables, the parables of Jesus, or at least five of them. Today, we're talking about the soils. Next week, we'll talk about the Good Samaritan. After that, we're going to go into the two builders, those who were building on the rock and the sand. Uh, we're going to be talking about the parable of the talents. We'll talk about the his, hidden treasure, 
the pearl of great price. We're going to be looking at these parables. And some of you right now, you may be brand new to this kind of stuff. You may be going, okay, uh, parables. I, I don't know what that means. Well, I, if I, want to, I want to give you what a parable is. A parable is a story that Jesus told that has an earthly setting. He's going to use the things of the earth going to tell a story, and this parable is an earthly story that has a kingdom meaning. It's got kingdom principles. He's pointing us to something that is even greater. And so what ends up happening here is he is pointing out some things in this parable about the soils. Now this, I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, this is going to be a difficult sermon for me. One, because I love this parable, and there is so much that I've got to figure out, okay, where, ha, what, what do I not need to say here? Because this right here is to us as a people. Literally, this parable is speaking to us. In this parable right here, he's going to talk about four different soils. And in this room, all of those soils are represented. Now, this parable, this particular one, is in two other places in the New Testament. It's in Matthew chapter 13, it's in Mark chapter 4, and Luke 8. Now listen, just like I say, if you see a word repeated, you circle it because it means something. Well, this parable is in three different gospels. It means something. It's that important. And what you see in Matthew and Mark about what they have to say about this is they say Jesus has been teaching all around the area. He's a teacher who teaches like no one else. He has a te he, as a teacher, he has authority, not like the religious leaders of the day. And it says that he came and he is about to start teaching this parable, and they notice there's people all around. Mark 13, Mark, or excuse me, Matthew 13, Mark 4. It tells us in those two that he gets into a boat because it's so crowded and they set out from the shore just a little bit because people are all crowded up. They're up against him. So I can imagine that means that it's not in the passage, but I can imagine him having to set back in this boat just a little bit. And as he's out in the boat, he's able to see a, a, a much larger picture of what's going on. Jesus taught in Galilee around the Sea of Galilee. And if you've ever been to Israel, I don't know if you have or not, but there's a brand new trip that's going to be starting in, in February of 24, 2024. There's going to be a, a, an Israel trip. Love for you to get signed up to go be a part of that. But where you see Jesus at teaching in Galilee, uh, it, it, the, the sea, the, the mountainside rolls down to the sea and it becomes a natural amphitheater as he sits and he begins to speak. He sets out in this boat. He sits down to teach. Everyone is seated on the hillside and he begins to teach this parable. I can imagine that he probably sees somebody up on the hillside sowing seed. Now, I want to make sure you hear me say this. This passage is talking about broadcasting seed. Some of you men, you know exactly what that's like. I mean, you uh, in September, October, like I did, you were broadcasting fescue. Some of you are about to be broadcasting Bermuda. I don't know why in the world you're going to do that, but you're going to do that. And you're not taking one seed and putting it in the ground, whether it is you're throwing it as this would have been in that day, sowing wheat, sowing crops, or you're broadcasting it. What you do when you get near a sidewalk or the road is you're trying to make sure that that, so that seed doesn't go on to that hard pan, onto that hard surface. This is probably what you're beginning to see, Jesus see. He is seated and he sees this and he begins to tell a story, a parable. A, a parable that he's using, I see this, I see this, and in his wisdom, in his sovereignty, he begins to teach them a spiritual truth. So with that, look at, look at the very first soil with me. We're not going to read all the way back through this. Dixie did that, but we are, I do want you to be able to see, and I'll give you some references as we walk through this. In, in, ver, in, verse, chapter, in verse 5 of chapter 8, in Luke, in Luke, you begin to see him talk about hard soil, hard soil. He says, listen, the gospel, in fact, let me, let me back up this because this is really important. Do you remember what he said that the seed was? What did he say the seed was? 
It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of God. It's the gospel going forth. So this seed is going forth and every, it's the same seed, but it's going to land in different soils and people are going to hear differently. How do I know they're hearing differently? Seven times it says hear, hearing. Jesus leading in says, to him who has ears, let him hear. So what's the first soil? Well, the very first soil is it's a hard soil. It's a hard soil. Jesus said that they were broadcasting that seed and that seed that was thrown, it would have landed on a hard path. Probably the same path they would have come down to sit down so they could hear the teacher teach. And and he would have seen that. They would have been casting that seed and that seed that they would have thrown, whatever the crop was of that seed, it would have hit that hard path, that dry, hard, compact uh, path, and it would just bounce. The scripture goes on to tell us Jesus is helping them to understand. Look at verse 12. Verse 12, he says that the soil represents those who hear, but they don't receive the word. And if they don't receive the word, what we know then is that they are not followers of Jesus Christ. They were not saved. They were hard hearted. This is where we get that phrase, they're hard hearted. Some of you in here, you've been sharing the gospel of Jesus, the good news of Jesus. You've been sharing that. You've been proclaiming that to, to people in your context, whether that's your friends, your family, your coworkers, your neighbors. You've continually been casting seed and it's just been, it's like it's just been bouncing. They're, I mean, they don't even do the old, yeah, that's nice. They, I mean, they don't even give you anything. It's just, nope, uh-uh, no. That, your gospel witness has bounced on that hard heart and just rolled. The scripture tells us, he goes on to say, the reason that happens is that the, the devil comes and he plucks it away from them like a bird. He takes it from them. It, it has nowhere to gain root. Now, I'm gonna, I want to say this to you, okay? I want you to hear this the right way. In some ways, those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, who have submitted our lives, that should bring a little bit of encouragement to you. That when we're rejected, and I need you to hear me, we're not rejected. The message of Christ is what's rejected. It's personal because we're the ones sharing it. But the encouragement for us may be, listen, they rejected Jesus's words, So if they rejected his words, when we're speaking his words, don't be offended. Don't you get afraid. Don't you be misconstrued. They're going to reject your words oftentimes also, especially if it is a hard pan, dry path where the soil will not receive the word of God. But I I have to encourage you with this. I, I have to encourage you. Don't quit sharing. You know what we're held responsible for? We're not held responsible for whether or not someone receives the word. We're responsible for casting the word, for sowing the word, for being people who are going to give a gospel witness. The song we just sung, the song, the last one song that we sung, there was a word. You can tell I like words. (laughs) There was a word that we sung over and over and over. Does anybody remember what it was? Merit. Do you know what merit is? Merit is work. And that song says there is no work that we can do that it will suffice. Do you realize there are whole world religions that they live to make merit? They bring sacrifices to false dead gods trying to earn their way. There is nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. It is as filthy rags. You know what our merit is in? The work of Jesus Christ. And people may not hear that. You're casting that seed to them and it seems, and you feel like it's just bouncing. Well, the scripture tells us this is a hard-hearted, hard pan. You know why? I think, because remember, you're casting the same seed. How are they hearing it? I believe they're hearing condemnation. I think they possibly are hearing condemnation in our good news wait a minute, I'm sharing good news. The good news that Jesus Christ came. He died for our sin. And you know what they hear? They hear the bad news. What? You're telling me I'm a sinner? Do you, listen, do you know my character? 
Listen, I'm a good person. I'm not like all of these others. I haven't done this or this or this. Do you realize how much I get? Have you seen how many friends I have on Facebook that like the things that I do? I mean, it's funny, but I actually get those kinds of things. Listen, I'm trying to do all of these good works. And what ends up happening is, is what you're sharing as good freedom, the great news they're hearing as you're condemning me. And you need to know that we don't do the condemning. What we do is we share the word of God. We cast the seed. And when that happens, when that happens, what we're doing, when they hear that they are a person in need and they believe that they are a person of good character, you don't know me. In essence, what you're doing, you're snatching their security blanket like Charlie Brown does to Linus. And they no longer have the very thing that brings them the most comfort. Their own works. Their own good deeds. And whether they respond or not, we must continue to sow, to cast the gospel, the good news of Christ. And then he moves to the second soil. Notice what he says is about the second soil in verse 6. Verse 6, he says the second kind of soil, it's, it's, it's a rocky soil. It's a rocky soil. Now, in Israel, uh, and specifically even in these areas uh, that Jesus is teaching, uh, the soil is very rich. It's very fertile. You can sow seed, and plants begin to burst up. The problem is, is they don't last long because just under the ground is really hard, rocky land. There's no place for it to take good root and last. Now, we ought to catch that. That, that should be very familiar to us right here in Middle Tennessee, right? I mean, you ought to catch that. You've got Rocky Glade. You've got Rock Springs. You've got Rock Vale. You've got Rock Ford. You've got, or you've got the good old Rocky Top. <laughs> Listen, we, we, we should recognize when this is spoken about. See, there's not enough soil for the root to begin to take root there. It springs up fast, but it doesn't last. It doesn't last. So what is this person hearing? If the first person, when, they, when the gospel is sown and they hear, and they're hearing condemnation, what is this, these people hearing? I believe these are the folks who are hearing that this is a gospel with no suffering. This is a gospel with no suffering. Because the scripture says, Jesus says, it comes up fast. In fact, notice this. It, it came with great joy. They received it with great joy. And it sprung up, but it didn't last. When the sun came up, it withered away. It burned up. It dried up. And I believe that this is a no suffering gospel. Folks, I'm going to tell you, you can look anywhere on any Christian bookstore. You can look anywhere that you want to look on a television and turn it on, and you can hear this kind of gospel being preached everywhere. And I want you to know, this is no gospel. The go because the true gospel, uh, the true, I, I want to make sure you're with me on this. I want to be really, really clear. The true gospel is nothing to do with no suffering. It has everything to do with the suffering of the one Jesus Christ who died on a cross for us. It has to do with forgiveness of sin, right relationship, so that we might stand righteous before a holy God because of the work of Christ on the cross. It doesn't have anything to do with me personally not suffering. That doesn't line up anywhere with Scripture. And when someone begins to receive suffering, those rocky soil believers... When they begin to experience suffering, hey, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed up for. What do you mean? God, I've been praying this, this sickness, this illness, this disease that you've given me. I've been praying for this. The death that I've experienced, are you kidding me, God? I came to you. I didn't think this is what I was going to get. This isn't what I thought. Do you know what rocky soil believers that gospel that they hear, that gospel of no suffering, when suffering comes to them, you know what they do? They pull the ripcord of parachute and they jump out. I'm done. I bail. This isn't what I signed up for at all. 
Do you know the people who hear the true gospel, though? The true gospel that come what may, the one whom we have said that we follow, the one who you realize in the Old Testament, Jesus the Messiah is called the son of suffering. The one who laid his life down, who was crucified on a cross for you and me. The one who suffered. You realize if if it happened to our Savior, it's it's probably going to happen to us. The one who knows the true gospel, you know what they do? They stand firm. No bail. No way out. Here I stand. Now, I need you to hear me. That does not mean That doesn't mean that you're probably not anxious about a situation or you're nervous about a situation. It just means that in the midst of where I am, I'm I'm, I'm standing forward. I'm persevering. I'm going to stand right here. This, listen, those that are on rocky soil, those where the seed has been sown and they hear, wait a minute, this is a gospel of no suffering, they're going to bail quickly. This is not who Jesus has called us to be. This is not who he's called us. And we saw this two weeks ago, didn't we? Do you remember at Palm Sunday, Jesus gets on the the colt and he comes in. And what are the people crying out to him as he comes into Jerusalem? Save us, save us, Hosanna, the king of the Jews, save us. Now, about four days later, when they realize, wait a minute. He didn't come to overthrow the Romans and like to set us free from being, the, the, run the occupier out. When they realized he's not going to do what I thought he was going to do. He, oh, listen, what I signed up for, he's not doing. What, what, begin, what did they begin to shout then? Crucify him, crucify him. Take Jesus, give us Barabbas. That is what rocky soil is all about. And this is not who we've been called to be. Notice with me in Matthew. I want you to, well, I want you to write it down. I want you to go see it. We don't have time to turn over there. Matthew's version of this, his version, his story of this parable, he calls this when tribulation or persecution arises. When tribulation or persecution arises. Luke chapter 8, verse 13, calls it a time of testing or temptation. Like, uh, for instance, you're tempted to sleep in. I don't want to go to church. I, you know what? Jesus loves me. He, I, it's not based on my own merit. I don't need to read the word. He loves me just as I am. There's a temptation that I don't need to be with the body. Listen, I, it's me and Jesus. I got me, Jesus, and my Bible. And then when suffering hits, tribulation hits, Persecution hits. You know, um, for most of the American experience in history, being a Christian has been advantageous. You know, I, I follow Jesus. We, this is in God we trust. It's on our money. This is a Christian country. Uh, this is a mom and daddy. Uh, it gets me, I mean, in s- some towns, if you're a member of the right church, oh, my business goes up. I know these people. I know these people. You're seen. How, have you ever been in a situation where the local politician wants to come to our politicians? They want to flow through because, man, if I can get the Christians. Folks, I, I want to say this to you real quick, and I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer, but what I am going to be, I want to point you to something. I think those days are gone. Following Jesus Christ today is going to cost all of us. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, all of us are going to have to go on record one day to say, I follow Jesus. It will cost you. It may cost you in your job. I can't sign that. What do you mean you can't sign that? Just sign it. You do it. Just, just say you go along with it. No, I, I can't do it. And when you don't do it, folks, it may mean that you're passed over for a raise, which means then it cost you financially, which means it cost your family. You, you got friends looking at you going, what? What do you mean? You mean you really take this Jesus stuff that far? You, are you kidding me? Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes, it talks about blessed are those who persecute you, but it also says blessed are those who revile, revile you for my namesake. You realize that there's the 
days of I'm stamping Christian. And li- no, listen, it's going to cost us. You think it's tough today? I need you to know I think it's going to get tougher. Listen, Jesus didn't sell an easy gospel. Jesus came and laid his life down. It cost him everything. Why would we think it would cost us any less? See, this, when the suffering comes, you bail. This is the rocky soil. Number three, the third soil, though, that he goes on to is the soil of the the thorny soil. The third soil is the soil of the thorns, the weeds. What ends up happening, he says in verse 7, he says, the weeds grow up and they choke out the life. They choke out the life. Look down at verse 14. In verse 14, he says, this soil represents those who hear the gospel, but the cares of the world end up killing their faith. I think these folks here are easy believism. And I want to tell you, I think this right here, this soil right here, I think this soil right here is the most prevalent soil that we have in the United States today. Middle Tennessee, Rutherford County, Murfreesboro, Woodbury, Smyrna, Christiana. This right here is the soil that we see often. It's the soil of, yeah, I'll take Jesus to be my Savior, but I'll sacrifice everything else if it causes me to have to make a sacrifice for Him. That may have gotten a little close to home for some of you. You see, this gospel, this thorny soil, this weedy soil, it says that the gospel, remember, the, 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 the gospel goes out. It's broadcast to everyone. And in case you're not catching this really quick, Those four soils, the three that we've just named, they're all prevalent in here. They're all prevalent in here. There are some of you in here today, you have a hard heart, and that gospel just keeps bouncing off. Some of you, you, you're, you're, you're hearing the gospel of condemnation. Some of you are hearing the gospel, the thorny soil, that man, sufferings happen, and you're like going, I don't know if I'm going to stay in this or not, because this ain't what I signed up for. Some of you, you're this thorny soil, and all of the cares of the world, this easy believing, yeah, I can have Jesus, but I can also have, I can have my my big house, I can have my great car, I can have a great job, I can have this, I can have this, I can have this, and if it ever comes to clash, If Jesus ever calls us to sacrifice, I may go with the stuff. You see, this this is where it gets. Yeah, I want the best for my kids. And I know what may be best spiritually, but yeah, they've got to get ahead. I got to get them in this line, I got to get them in this track. Man, listen, if I, uh, my money, I I, got to set up for retirement. What am I going to do if I get sick? What am I going to do if, I need you to hear me. Jesus said his gospel will cost you everything. The scripture talks about Jesus said there was a rich young ruler that came to him who said, I've done it all. I've kept all the commandments. What do I have to do to earn eternal life? He said, I've kept all those commandments. He said, one thing you like, go sell it all. Sell it all. Get rid of it all. Give it to the poor and then come follow me. Do you remember what happened to that rich young ruler? And he said, he, he went away sad. Couldn't do it. He says, this right here is the type of soil that will choke you out. There's an author named Aaron Wren who recently has published an article called Cheaters Always Prosper. And in it, he talks about how cheating is of, uh, it's advantageous today, it's easy, and it is admirable in many respects. He cites a study of uh, an Ivy League school, an Ivy League school called Dartmouth. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. An Ivy League school, Dartmouth, these are like top uh, academic young people in our world, not just the United States, in our world. He cites that they now have discovered how to 
cheat really, really well. And this was something that kind of caught, I thought was strange, that one of the dominant ways of testing at this Ivy League school is multiple choice online test. I thought it was kind of unique. Not only is it multiple choice online test, you get two cracks at it. You get two shots at it. Seriously. So what they've decided, how they have decided in many instances to be able to cheat, to get ahead so that they can have the American dream, so that they can have it all, so that there, there's no more. Listen, I don't have to sacrifice to study is they'll get four of their friends, they get into a room and they all take the test and they've all predetermined, you're going to choose A, you're going to choose B, you're going to choose C, you're going to choose C, D. And after they all take it, now then they know which answer goes with which test, which, which question, which is the right one. And as they take that test the second time, why they get two choices, two chances, I don't know. Guess what ends up happening to all four of them? They all get perfect scores. Seems crazy, doesn't it? People cheating to get ahead. Can I bring it down a little closer? You realize that this week your taxes are due. And you realize that this is one of the biggest cheats in the American public. People skirting here, changing this. You know, if I, with the advent of this programs that you can do it yourself and you can like, if I click this button, oh no, I got to pay all this. But if I unclick this, oh, I'm going to get a refund. All for the sake of I need a little bit more. Now listen, I'm going to be the first to say I like low taxes. But cheating my way out of it is never what the gospel calls us to do. Because if you'll cheat your way in life, when Christ calls us and he bids us to come and die, when he calls us to, listen, be generous with your time, be generous with your talents, be generous with your money. Are you kidding me? I need this. You see, this thorny soil will eventually, the thorns come up and they choke out whatever it is. And at that point, you walk away because I'm not sacrificing for that cost me too much. Number four, the fourth soil quickly, and I close, is this. It's the soil. It's called good, the fruitful life. Look at verse eight. Verse eight says, the, says that this is the soil that will bear fruit. In fact, in Matthew and Mark's version, it says that some of the soil, it'll bear 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. Meaning that that seed, that gospel that comes in, that the true gospel, the one that, yes, Christ, I follow you. I, I'm with you. You have saved me from my sin. That gospel that comes in, it begins to bear much fruit. And you and I know that. We understand that, don't we? When you have an orange seed and you plant one orange seed, do you only get one orange no, you get multiple oranges. But even if you did get one orange off that orange tree, how many seeds are in that one orange? In this room here right now, there are, uh, I'm going to venture to say that most of you in here, you're good soil. You've surrendered your life to Christ. You know the true gospel. The question today is, is are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit that would be evident of that? Some of you are going, okay, well, what's the fruit? Well, one, it could be converts. You're, you're like, man, I, I share my faith, and I see things begin to happen. They may not be all coming to Christ, but I see people's lives change. It could be good deeds. You know, the Scripture says that we do good deeds so that they might see our Father in heaven. They see what we do and give glory to our Father in heaven. The, Galatians chapter 5 says that there is the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, Against such things, there is no law. Are you familiar with those things? Yes. This is the fruit that your life begins to produce. Most of us in here, I'm going to look around. People that I know in here, you're, you're serving, you're giving, you're going, you're growing, you're, you're, your life connected with others, and you're seeing 
in the scope of like agriculture, you're seeing bushels of fruit. My goodness. I mean, some of you, like you're, you're like an engine, man. You're, you're producing all kinds of stuff. Others, it takes longer for us to do that. The issue is, is that you're seeing the deeds, the fruit of righteousness happen. The indwelling of the spirit of God is alive in you and it is evident to all. It is evident to all. Today, these are the people who are sitting in here right now in this room as I'm doing this, casting the seed, casting the seed. And you know what? Some of you right now, you're, it's just bouncing because you're hearing, man, that dude is, who is he? Who's he? He doesn't know me. He doesn't have a right to say that. Some of you in here, you're going, well, well I mean, l- listen, it, here's what ends up happening. Let me, let me just be real honest with you in case I, I have been honest with you already. <laughs> but let me just be real even more. You know, most people, when they hear something about the soils, they think one or two. They're not the hard soil if they're a believer. So they automatically go, well, I'm, in, I'm good soil. But you realize that Jesus he assumes in this teaching that wherever he's teaching, there is soil two and three happening. So that means in this room that there are people who have had the seed cast. You, man, so Kyle, are you telling me? Hold on, Kyle, let, let me make sure. I'm looking at smart people out here. Are you telling me that someone can lose their salvation? Because it says that they received it with joy and it burst forth. I'm glad you're asking that question. Can I answer it for you real quickly in two, fra- two things real quick? Number one, I don't think that that's the point of this particular te- teaching. This is not a, a, a concise or a, a, a full explanation of what salvation is. This is an explanation of those who hear the gospel and what happens with the gospel seed. Number two is this, is that when you look across the entirety of the Scripture, when you look across the entirety of the Scripture, the entirety of the New Testament, those who have received Christ, those who have entered into covenant relationship with Him, they are saved. They are changed. It's called the preservation of the saints, the eternal security of the saints. Because the gospel has taken root. But we also know that this to be true, this also to be true. Look at 1 John. 1 John is in the New Testament. It's near the end of the Bible. I know you're hearing a lot today, but this is very important. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19 says this. They went out from us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are all not of us. This passage right here says that there are those who are among us, who may look like us, who want to self-identify with us, but at some point they leave because suffering is, I can't do it anymore. I didn't get what I thought I was getting. That's, it's cost me too much. Following Jesus has cost me too much. You want me to suffer? You want me to sacrifice? I'm out. We, we know that that's why. Jesus even told a parable, another story about the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the weeds. And he says, listen, people come in and they sow weeds among the wheat. And they say, well, do you want us to go out and pick the weeds? He said, no, 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 no. I'll, I, if they look the same, it looks close, but I'll separate it. We know that. One of the saddest verses in all of the Bible, the sections, you've heard me say this before to me, is Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, where he says, there's going to be people that he looks at on the last day that says, depart from me. I, I, I never knew you. Yeah, you, you did these things, but your heart was far from me and you never, I never knew you. You see, today, we have to examine what soil is the gospel message going into. And you're the only one that can do that. You're it. Because I can't look at your life and see all of these great things that you're doing. If I do that, listen, man looks on the outward, 
God looks on the heart. 2 Corinthians, roll over to 2 Corinthians, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Paul writes, he says, you should examine yourself to see whether or not you're even in the face. He says, test yourselves. He says, do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. I close with this verse. Back over in Luke 8, Luke 8, 15, Jesus says about the good soil, he says, as for that in the good soil, they are those who hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and they bear fruit with patience. That word patience can also be translated perseverance. Perseverance, that we persevere All throughout the scripture, you see this. Who are those that follow him? Who are those that know him? Who are those that are saved? Those who persevere to the end. Those who persevere to the end. Parents, what are you teaching your children about perseverance? Do you let them quit easily on things? I don't feel like it. Oh, yeah, I don't matter. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to... Parents, let me ask you, what are you showing about perseverance? What are you showing about perseverance with the Lord? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you are the greatest Sunday school teacher, if you give all of your riches but you're not following and trusting Jesus as the motivation of your heart, I question whether or not, do you even know Christ? Are you trying to buy favor and curry favor? All throughout Scripture in the Old Testament, it says, sacrifice is not what I've desired. It's you and your heart that I've desired. And I believe this, when he gets your heart, he'll get everything else. What is your soil like today? It is possible to be good soil and get really, really lax and lay down and the weeds begin to just pop up because you've not been following Christ the way you should. Some of you today, you found yourself there. I spoke with a man after the first service. He said, you know what? I I think that I have been experiencing a rocky soil in my life lately. We had a conversation about that. Folks, the question today, what soil are you? I want to close with verse 8. Luke 8, 8, Jesus said, To him who has ears, let him hear. What are you hearing today? Not from me, but from the Spirit of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for today. Lord God, I'm asking you to do something that only you can do. God, would you allow your Holy Spirit to speak to people in here today? Father, I'm going to ask that if there's someone in here today who's heard condemnation, Lord, I pray that you would break through. Would you save people today? God, I'm asking that if there are those in here today who have They've been rocky soil. They found themselves as as thorny and weedy soil. Father, would you please let them repent and come to you? Father, I want to ask you, for those in here who are good soil, would you give increase? I thank you that when a seed dies, it's planted in the ground, it dies, it is then able to give life an overabundance of fruit. So, Father, would you let those believers in here who have trusted you, may their lives be so fruitful for your kingdom's sake. Lord Jesus, we love you and we trust you. You alone are the reason that we're here. Jesus, will you be magnified in everybody's life in here today?